Hey guys, today I'm going to show you guys how to uh, insert a robot onto a Discord server. So first thing, let me just make a new server. And so if you've never used Discord before, you're going to want to create an account and log in. Um, you won't have any servers if you're not onto anyone's server. Um, but I'm just you'll have this option to create your own server. So for what I'm actually going to show you today, you're going to have to be either admin of a server or created the server. So go ahead and click the plus symbol to create a server on Discord. Um, so when you do that, I'm just going to go create my own, and I'll just do it for a club. And I'll just call this um, Computer Science Club. So maybe this will be my actual one for my Computer Science Club. So when you create a new server, there will be nothing there. Just be you by yourself. That's me, Smelly Allen. And... Um, Let's see. So once you're in, create your own server. Basically, now I have the little crown next to my name. I'll be able to add bots to this um, server. So right now, it's just going to stay like this. So how are we going to ro add robots? Well, we're actually going to do it through the Discord applications page. So let's do that first. So go to Google and type in Discord applications. Okay, I've already done this today. <laughs> so, oh lord. Okay, so. Click on applications from the developer portal, and you can see the robots I've already created. And I'm going to go ahead and do new application. So if you don't have any applications created, you won't have anything there. So click new application. And what should we name this? We'll call it um, CVHS bot. Okay, so we'll call it the CVHS bot. Okay, and let's actually get an image for our CVHS bot. So let me just do that real fast because I like having... Um, Let's see, CVHS. There's a good one. We'll use this one. Save image as CV. Okay. And now that I've got an image, let's go back to here. And so I'm just going to give my robot a little customization so I know which one is which. So there's my high school emblem, CVHS bot. Okay. So we've created a bot, although not really. So to actually create the robot, you have to click on this little bot symbol. So on the left side, click, oh, first got to save changes. If you add an image, you're going to have to save it. So now you can see that the little logo has changed from the Discord default. So click on the bot symbol on the left, and you're going to just go ahead and add the bot. So do you really want to do this? Yes, I do. I want to add this robot. So a wild bot has appeared, and essentially this robot has a specific token that's kind of hidden. And so if you, I'll just show you what mine, this one, so it's going to be a really long kind of password. So this password you want to kind of keep private. If you don't, if this information gets out, people can edit this bot, and then they can actually make it their bot. So if they have access to this um, token, they'll be able to get into your bot and mess with it. So typically you're going to keep that, that private, and I'll talk about that when we go to the code part of this. So you don't really have to do anything else other than create the robot. Um, you will see some... Um, you see these permissions integers down here. As you start adding permissions, these numbers change, but you don't really need to do that here. I'll show you why. We're going to use the authorization tool on the left right above bot, so click on here. When you go there, you're going to select bot, since that's what we're actually talking about. You'll see that this is the URL that it generates. Now this URL right now has no permissions. See, it says a zero after permissions. As you start clicking on the permissions you give it, um, so you're allowing the robot to have more authority, you'll see this number start to change, okay? So we're actually going to select, just for the simplicity, we'll just select all text permissions. So it can have all text permissions. And we're also going to give it a general permission to view the channel, okay? So for right now, we're just creating a very simple bot. We're not going to go into any of these other um, permissions. But one thing you want to be very careful of is who you allow to be an administrator. So if you do put some time into a channel, and you don't want people to mess with it, you want to be careful about ever giving anyone admin permissions to your channel. Okay, so this robot is just basically allowed to do text messages, and it can view the channel. So that's so far all I'm allowing it to do. And once you've done that, you're going to just copy this URL. So this URL right here is how you're going to actually access your robot from the Internet. So we want this robot to get onto my server. So if I go back to my server, remember how I'm just by myself? So if I want this robot to add to that server, I'm going to use this URL right here. So once you've copied that URL, just open a new tab and then paste and go. 
And essentially, it'll just allow me to select the server with this robot. Now, since I'm actually, uh, these are the servers I have, I can actually add it to these ones. Okay, so this is the one I just created, Computer Science Club. If you remember, that's the name of this server, Computer Science Club. So that's the one I'm going to select. You'll also notice it doesn't allow me to add it to any of the other ones that I'm not the um, creator of. Okay, so your robot has to be created by you. Oh, your server has to be created by you. All right, so let's go ahead and authorize it. Make sure it knows that we're actually human. <laughs> My robot is human. No. <laughs> All right, so now if we go back to the chat, you should notice that there is now a robot in my chat. But it's offline because it's actually not having any code. So this robot is actually has joined my channel, but it doesn't have any functionality or any code. It doesn't know how to do anything. It's not even online. So that's where we're going to use REPL to do that. So um, this right here, by the way, this Discord py this is on the um, python description of the package so in case you're wondering about the discord package for python which is what i'm going to use to program it um, you could install it using pip so if you have your own computer and you've downloaded python you don't need to use REPL. you can use pip install in the command line and then then you'll be able to use and import it you also can use git so if you don't like using pip you can use git and you can clone the Discord package from GitHub, and you can then add it there. Once you've got it added, so it's not, you won't be able to import Discord if you haven't actually used this before. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little better. So you won't be able to, to, do, to do the first command, which is to import the package Discord, if you haven't installed it, unless you're using REPL. REPL has already connected this to their library, so you can actually import it from REPL. So that's what I'm going to do with my students. Also, a lot of my students are using Chromebooks, so they don't actually have the ability to install packages. So they're basically not even able to install software. You just have to use web-based IDEs for all your programming. So REPL is a pretty good one. So if you've never used REPL before, you'll need to sign up. And if you have used it before, you'll just go ahead and log in. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in with my Google account. I don't even know which one. I guess it doesn't matter. I'll just use this one. Um, so once you once you get in, you'll have anything you've worked on before will be here. So I'm going to go ahead and click the plus symbol. So I'm going to add a new REPL. I'm going to do it in Python. Okay, so I'll click on Python. And the name of my robot, what did I name my robot? What was the name? CVHS bot. So I like to name my program whatever it's called. So I'll call it CVHS robot. All right, so far so good. So it takes a second to create the REPL. And now the code that you're gonna actually add is going to be pretty simple, not very long. I'm just gonna give it to you and actually I'll put the description, I'll put the uh, link to a pastebin where I have this code. But you're gonna have to import Discord. That's the first thing you wanna do, okay? You're also gonna import the OS. And the reason is because I wanna hide that token into another file. So I'm going to import OS. So there's two packages you'll need. You don't need to install this with PIP. If you, um, you will have to install Discord if you're using it at home. Um, so let's create the client's name. So a lot of people just use client. So most of the examples I see, they just do client equals. But you could actually name your client anything. So I'll just do client equals Discord dot client, the, the, the class client. Okay. So this is the class. This is the client that we're going to actually be accessing through Discord. So once you have opened Discord, one of the classes that you're going to import is the client class, which will get the actual client. And we're going to assign it to this name, lowercase client. So when you see lowercase client, just know that I'm talking about this object that I just created, Okay, which is what I'm going to do right now. So we're going to type at client, lowercase client, the, the object we just created, dot event. So at the client event, we're going to define two things. The first is async def on ready. So this is a function as part of the um, Discord package. So the on ready must be, you can't change this name, make sure you keep that the same. And we'll just print, um, we have logged in as, and we'll do zero.user. Um, and then we'll also format it. So let me extend this window a little bit to the side. Dot format 
and then put the client inside. Okay, so you really just for for this just copy it down exactly. Later on, you can change this if you don't like it. But for right now, we'll just to get it running. We'll just copy this down verbatim, and um, so that's all that we're going to do for the on ready. We're also going to do an event for if there's a message in the server. Okay, so we'll do at um, client dot event. So um, we'll we'll define in the in the case that it's the uh, message, we'll say on message. So if there's a message sent, what do we want to do? Um, and you actually need a parameter for here for the message. Um, you're going to pass in the message that is sent. So when someone types in something into this message board, that's the message. So this right here, this string that we actually type in is going to be passed into this event. Okay. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to pass that string, which in that case would have been hello, but we haven't, we haven't run this yet, but that's the string that we're going to do. The first thing you want to do is check to make sure it's not the robot sending the message. So we want to make sure that the robot's not sending the message and then checking its own message, because if it sends the wrong message, it could be stuck in an infinite loop. So we want to make sure that we don't do that. So we'll just do if the message dot author again has to be spelled author is equal to the client dot name or user. Sorry. If it is itself, then we're just going to break out. So we'll just return. This will break out of this um, function. So it won't go any further than that. And therefore, it won't get stuck in an infinite loop. So the other thing we want to do is look for a specific message. So if the message, and this is where you can get fun. So, so most of your additions are going to be right here. So if the content dot starts with, and we'll just say, for well, what's this one doing? C, we'll just say CVHS. So if it starts with CVHS, which is the name of our school, or the acronym of our school, um, what do we want it to do? So we are going to send a message to so do await, and we'll do message dot channel send. So channel dot send. What should we send? CVHS rocks. So we can just send any message you want to in this. So basically, if they read this message, they will respond with this message. Okay. So that's what we want to do. That's how our robot can respond to our server. Now again, if I do this now, if I write CVHS, nothing happens because I haven't connected it to the server yet. I mean, it's on, but it's not even online. Once I get it online, though, then it will do it. So we're very close, but we're not quite there. So how do I do that? Um, well, actually, there's two things I have to do. First, I have to like get that key. So going back to my developer uh, portal where I have this, where I got this URL that allowed me to add my Discord to the server, my robot to the server. If you go to the general information of your robot, um, actually, it's the robot right here, the token, not the key. So the key isn't what you need. You want the token. This allows me to access the robot. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this right here. Again, it's this weird long number right here. So what am I going to do with that? So I could just put it into this, and then everyone would know what it is. And you you would be careful because anything on REPL, the way that REPL works, since it's a free entity, is that it's basically going to have you, um, it's going to be public to anyone at any time. So you don't want to just like put your token in here. Uh, so just for security purposes, I'm going to hide it. And that's what the purpose of OS. You'll notice that it hasn't been used yet. That's what that green little squiggly line means. It means that I've imported this package I'm not using, which I'm going to do right now. So um, on your file tree, you're going to go ahead and add a file. So click plus symbol. And the file you're going to call is .env, and it needs to be named .env. That stands for the environment. And what's important about this is it's actually hidden from the public. So no one can see this file. So here I can go ahead and put my token equals, and I can just paste in that weird long token. So that long number that I got that was in this that I want to keep hidden, I'm going to put that in the environment file. So. That's going to be in this file. That's the only thing I'm going to put in there for right now. Okay. So now I can access that file if I run the OS. Okay. So the way you do that is you tell your client, a hey, client, I want you to run the OS and I want you to get the environment file. So you type get 
env see is that right get yeah, env usually it auto completes and i want to type in the string that i'm searching for which is the token okay so something's wrong here oh i put a parenthesis so it should be dot okay so there now yeah, that oh um, do i have enough parentheses um, looks like it yeah okay so that basically so this will open up the environment and it will look for this and it'll replace it with that with that weird long thing so what i was saying is if you don't care about security you could just manually put that right here and you wouldn't have to run this so let's go ahead and see if this works if it works it will install all these packages and it will say we have logged into this robot so it's going to go through. Looks like so far so good. It's updating some things. This is why using REPL is kind of better. I don't have to actually install anything. I can just tell REPL to go ahead and bring all this stuff into this program and actually run it, which will tell me, please, that we are logged in. Yay. So it says we have logged in as CVHS bot. So we're actually done. So if I go back to my um, server, you can now see that the robot is actually online. So now when I type in that secret message, CVHS, it responds with CVHS rocks. So um, it's kind of cool. So you can play and you can add more. Once you get it working, you can add more methods and you can have, there's a lot more. So I invite you to check out the, the disc, I'm sorry, the, the uh, discord.py package. And you can kind of look at some of their other options. They've got some different um, commands that you can add. And you can do a lot of cool stuff. So I hope you enjoyed that. And let me know if you have any problems with this. And I'll try my best to help. All right. Talk to you later.